Hello YouTube, so um, it's about a month and a half in now from setting up the wormery. If you've not seen my wormery setup video, I will post a link below. Um, I said I was going to do some regular updates because I've noticed people in the UK when they buy these, they tend to not do updates for some reason, so I often wonder if they don't work. Um, so about a month and a half in, I'm going to do one now, and then probably about three months, six months and nine months, I will post more results. The first bit of this video is just literally going to be me going to be talking and you staring at that, and then I'm going to go over there and open it up. Now, as you can hopefully see, um, after the setup video, the tray at the bottom of the tap, that's the sump, that's not where the worm did live. Then there's actually two trays on top of that, and then obviously the roof. Now, really, I should only have one tray. Um, however, what I found with the amount of worms escaping, I thought maybe I had ordered too many worms for the bedding. So I put another tray in to see if they would migrate down. And on the initial findings, they did, but we will have a look today. So actually, a month and a half in, you shouldn't see those two trays there. Um, but I've got two because I ordered a kilogram of worms rather than 500 grams worth. Um, and I think I probably ordered too many. Um, so yeah, so normally you would see one tray, but I've actually got two. So I'm kind of working this a little bit backwards. So the initial problem I found with this was the worms escaping. Now in the booklet that comes with the pack, um, this little handy guide here, it does say that you will find a few escape. Um, so the first night, just to let you know, this is in the kitchen for this filming because it's absolutely raining down, raining outside, and I've got loads of food I want to get in, in and fed. So I need to make this video today. So it does live outside now. Um, it's only in the kitchen today, so I can do this film whilst it's raining outside. So the first couple of days, it, this lived in my kitchen. Um, the first night, no worms escaped. Left the light off. Completely forgot all about it. Came down in the morning, no problems at all. Um, second night, came down in the morning, uh, again lights were off because I thought no worms were escaping and found probably five or six dead worms across the floor where they've wiggled out, not been able to find any moisture and then they die. Um, so I rang the people that provided me with the wormery and they said that's fine, just leave the lights on for a few nights. For the next couple of nights I left the lights on um, and the worms didn't escape but obviously my ideal scenario is wormery, put food in, worms eat the, wor worms eat the food fried compost and that's it so after a couple of nights i put them outside don't really know how many escaped and how many didn't um although then in the uk we came into a period of lots and lots of rain so the sound of the rain pitter pattered down and every time i looked out the window at night time i would see a few worms crawling across the floor trying to escape so i'd run out and pick them up and put them back so I probably did have quite a few escapees i think that was due to the, the temperature was constantly changing going hot going cold going hot going cold and then lots and lots of rain making it nice and damp one tip i found <coughs> pardon me is to put cardboard underneath the wormery outside there's only cardboard in here just to keep it off the kitchen floor um, but put the work put the cardboard outside on the wormery and then the worms that do escape they just go into the cardboard because it's corrugated and they happily live down there some seem to be laying eggs having baby worms and then eventually they wiggle back up or they wiggle off into the garden um, but i think most of my worms escaping has now finished because over the last few days when i've been doing minor feeds um, there seems to be quite a lot of worms in there and the worms are getting bigger and fatter. I haven't done much feeding yet, I must admit. Um, probably a couple of weeks in, I started putting some food in. I haven't really followed the instruction about putting it one side, I've sort of spread it out. I do tend to bury it down a bit. I have used a bit of the worm food that came provided with it, which is this stuff here. Um, just thought in the early days it makes sense to use that. I've been quite curious as to what this actually is, because it's not exactly expensive, but I'm sure they make some good money on it. I've seen other YouTubers say that it's actually just chicken feed pellets um, crushed up. So I might, in future, if I need some worm food, get some chicken feed pellets and crush them up and see if that works. But there's plenty of food waste, etc., that I produce to feed them. Um, and one thing I bought just today is some crushed oyster shell. So you can use crushed oyster shell or you can use normal eggs, egg shells from your, from your home food waste. Just crush them up because worms have gillets, so they need grit inside their gillets to process the food. Otherwise, they can get quite ill. So I bought this little jar um, from a pet supply. I think it was like three pounds, two pounds, three pounds. Not a lot of money. It was wasn't this fine. It was a lot, um, a lot bigger. So what I've done is I've put it through. Um, I've got a neutral bullet, and it's got like a grinding option on it. So most food presses and food blitzers would have the same thing. I just want it through that to make it a little bit more sandy, a little bit finer, so the worms can eat that. So the idea is to feed it and then put some of this on as well. This just helps the worms be able to process the food. I think the only problem I found in the early days is the worms escaping. And that's hopefully stopped now. And I do have the two bins. So the top bin started in September. And then the one below it um, only started a few weeks ago. So I've kind of got two bins on the go, which is a bit unfortunate. And the top bin is the one that's going to finish first. And then in theory, you'd have one on and the worms would migrate up. 
So if the top bin does finish, what I might find is I have to put the bottom bin on the top one. So I'm kind of doing that a little bit backwards, but hey, I think the best thing to do now is to go and take a quick look. So I've not opened this today. I've literally pulled it inside from the rain. I'm hoping that there's no worms in that lid and we'll see what's inside. Okay, so here we go. So let's just take the lid off first of all. First thing to check is if there's any worms in the lid. So actually, no, that's a really good sign. Just a load of moisture, because as I said, it is raining outside. But no worms in the lid. And then, go try and work out where the light is. So as you can see, it's very damp here. Um, this was the side that I fed last. So there's a mixture of newspaper, bits of random cardboard, but this cardboard, it just keeps it in place. And as you can see, there's a few worms there on top, and if you can see them just there. Big fat worms, which is good. I'm gonna just have a quick nosy and see what's going on. Then I need to give this a feed. There's a little baby worm there, I don't know if you can see that. And bear in mind the lights on and this is inside, all these worms are gonna to start to hide away. There's quite a lot of food in there. Uh, the worms seem healthy enough, big and happy. Which is good, no longer escaping. Let's annoy this one, pick it up. And yeah, as, as you can see, they are there. They're escaping quite nicely. Um, there's quite a bit of food in here at the moment, and I'm gonna give it a big feed today. So this might be one feed and then leave it alone for a while. Worms do like cardboard. Something else someone suggested is put in, put in toilet rolls inside toilet rolls to see what the worms do. And the worms actually seem to be happy living underneath them. There's even some worms happily crawling into it. So I didn't fill that up, so that's interesting. The worms have pushed the food and the soil inside a little bit, which is good. And as you can see, well, I hope you can see, there is plenty of worms actually living where this cardboard was. That's good. So I'm just going to put that back because clearly that's working. It also gives it a little bit of um, a variation, if that makes sense. So the air can circulate down a little bit more. But yeah, there's loads of food here. It's supported by other people wear gloves because it's really slimy. Um, but it's lifting that up. Plenty of worms. So they're obviously very happy now. Just going to check out the other side on this one. And then we will do a feeding. So over here, I didn't put any, any of the paper down. This is bits of eggshell that I've not really crushed up that well, uh, but they will eat that. It's full of calcium as well, so it's good for them. But the crushed oyster shell is obviously a lot finer crushed up. As you can see there, there's plenty of worms on top. I obviously need to put some more paper down here. Look at the size of that one. That's a big old worm. And And actually those two worms, I believe, are in the process of mating. So I'm gonna cover that back up quite quickly um, because where you see the knobbly bit on top, there, that is where it shows that they're sexually ready or whatever the right way of putting that is. And then the worms form together and rub themselves and, and breed. So that one's obviously gonna make some babies quite soon, which is really cool. Um, so I don't really wanna disturb that because I want them to so hopefully you can just see that. There's two worms there. There we go, two worms there, both connected with their knobbly bits, doing whatever they do. But I recover them up so they're not in the in the light because worms don't like the light, so they're gonna start to bed down. So I don't wanna disturb them because I wanna see lots of baby worms and worm cocoons. I did actually see some worm cocoons in here the other day. So I was hoping to spot one. Be able to show you, um, and it would appear that the ones I saw <laughs> probably right underneath where those two worms are reproducing um, aren't there. I may well find it when I feed up in a minute. But the worms seem happy enough. the The soil is getting there. Um, 
I don't know what I put in here. There's loads of worms there, all wiggling away. I've been putting in a mixture of food and coffee grounds. Coffee grounds are also good for pr processing. So there's plenty of food in here, to be fair. But I'm going to do one big feed. That's an avocado shell. Sorry, that's an avocado shell. So the top tray is doing really well. And then we've obviously just seen a couple of worms that have reached maturity. So they're going to do what they do. And then they will lay cocoons, which is quite cool. Okay, I'm going to put the camera down for a minute. And we'll look at the next layer. Okay, so here we go. This is the second layer. This is one that I started a little bit later. Um, so it's heavily compacted down by the weight of the top one. And it's also rained a lot. And there's a worm making a run for it. But see if you see that white knobbly thing there, from what I understand, that is when you know that the worms are at a point of maturity enough to reproduce. So that worm hopefully will do what we saw the other two worms doing. That worm will find another worm and it will connect and then they do their thing. And then they lay cocoons. So that would be quite good. So if you have a quick look, I'll just move this one out of the way. They're quite lively these worms. I'll pop them down there. So this is really damp actually. Um, again, worms don't mind damp. Also, sorry for the dodgy camera work. I'm going to get a better camera for my next video. But as I said, I really wanted to just get this review made and then I can get on with feeding them up. So this is really compacted down. But the worms are still surviving. And as I said, I didn't put any worms down here. There's many of the worms that have actually come down here. They come down here because they want to. So again, I've got my toilet roll with toilet rolls in it. And yeah, once again, there's worms living underneath it. No worms inside it, but they seem very happy to live underneath. This is all the paper that's shredded. Um, I've also mixed in some leaves into this one. I've got leaves outside because it's so rainy. Um, the leaves should be dry really before. Worms don't mind moisture. And this is all the coconut coir. So I made the second bedding up like I made the first one. Um, and this has not been eaten yet, so there's actually a lot of food down here for the worms already. But the worms that are here, again, they all seem quite happy. They're all big and fat. Um, all getting that nice bubbly thing. I don't know what it's called, I'm sure. One of the worm experts on here will be able to tell, tell me and leave a comment below if you know what that bubbly thing means. But here you go. This is what I was looking for. So if you can see that there, that is a worm cocoon. Oop. We've got to get a camera where I can see what I'm filming. So that's a worm cocoon there. See in the early stages, because it's still like a pale yellowy white. When it goes dark, like a dark red colour, apparently that's when they're ready to mature. And then the, the little baby worms come out. There can be sort of 10 to 15 baby worms in each cocoon, apparently. So that's quite good. Let's pop that back in there. Um, when I looked in one of these two bins the other day, as I said, there was loads and loads of, well, not loads and loads of worm cocoons, but I found quite a few, which I thought was very encouraging. Especially as down here, this is just meant to be an overflow. Um, just in case the worms aren't happy up above, they can come down here below. Um, but yeah, there's loads of this cocoa coir stuff still to be processed. Um, bits of food in there, etc. I'm having a good old dig around and ruining their habitat. This is quite damp down here. So that this one, I am totally going to redo, add some new paper. But I guess with the weight from above, it is going to get, going to get it. Um, but again, they're not running for the hills. They seem to be staying in here now. Just having a quick nosy on the other side. But we did put quite a lot of food. So basically down here, it's, down here it's really damp. Um, but 
yeah, the worms that have come down have come down by themselves and decided to stay. The fact that we saw a cocoon, and I'm not really digging too deep, is a good sign. It means that the worms are moving in. Mm, some of this really stinks. <laughs> ah, some avocado. So there's not a huge amount of worms down here. They're obviously all at the top. This probably doesn't need too much feeding down here. Because, yeah. Okay. So this is just damp and gooey mess. So I'm going to sort this one out. We bet it. But clearly there's worms down here. They're quite happy. It is very moist though, so I'm going to add quite a bit of shredded newspaper. I do have some leaves outside, but they're damp because it's raining. I've not had a chance to dry them. Um, but yeah. As I said, this is just an overflow bin at the moment, so I'm not too fast. And obviously it doesn't get a lot of air because it's compressed down by the other one. So that's that. This is the second one. So what I'll quickly do is just check out the sump below just to see how many worms we've got in there and come back to you guys shortly. Okay, so here we go in the sump. And as you can see, there's actually quite a lot of worms in here. All there, all over here and down there. Now the people at the worm farm told me nothing to be worried about. Some worms just like to live in the sump. Um, but that's a lot of worms. <laughs> There's also quite a lot of liquid in here, again, because it's rained. One thing I found with this, th this design is designed so that the eventually overflows out. But as you can see, well, if you can see, there's a lot of liquid in there. And I have just turned the tap off for this video because obviously I don't want all this stuff in my kitchen. Um, but it's got to flow up quite a lot before you get there. And I put all this paper in to absorb the moisture so the worms don't drown. But yeah, there's a lot of worms. And all these worms are now going to go crazy and try and find the dark. So what I'm going to do is move all these worms back into the top tray. And then I'm going to feed them up. Um, so I will do that and come back to you. As you can see, that worm is now going into the liquid. So I want to stop that one because you don't want that worm to drown. Now oh, look, he's finding his own way out. He's gone, nope, I'm not going in there. Okay, so there we go. That's my worm farm review. So actually, after a month and a half, to be fair... Um, it's going quite well. I think most of the ones that have wanted to escape have now escaped. Obviously, there's quite a bit in there at the moment. I think that's just because it's been raining hard for the last few days. They're going down, um, either trying to find moisture or they're trying to escape the moisture from those two there. That bottom one was very moist, to be fair. Although, actually, the cocoa coir underneath isn't that moist. It's just the bedding on top is a bit moist. But it's not getting a lot of air because it's been compressed down. So that probably wouldn't be a problem for most people um, because you'd only have one tray going at once. So the system seems to be working after a month and a half. It's processing the food. I have done a big feed and I'm going to do a big feed on it today. But overall, I'm very impressed. So yeah, I think it's going rather well. So I'm going to leave the video here, guys. This is my review over. I'm looking forward to doing the three month review where hopefully that top tray there will be done. And this tray there will be the one that we'll be working on next. And as this one gets more processed, I think that one will go on the bottom and that one will go on the top. But normally speaking, I would stick, if I was you, I'd only order 500 grams and just do the one tray. When it's finished, start the second tray. Don't do what I've done and do it a bit backwards. But either way, it seems to be working. The worms are all big and happy and wriggly. Um, on this video, I've managed to catch worms in the act of reproducing, but obviously they don't like the light, so I didn't want to film that and stop because... I want the worm cocoons, I want the baby worms. So I'm going to put all this back together and thank you for watching. If you've got any knowledge, any comments, please do comment below. Cheers, guys.